Okay. Now, there's another way to think about this concavity issue is let's consider two price vectors. Okay. P1 naught up to Pn naught u bar and that utility level and P11 up to Pn1 u bar. So same utility level, that's important. I got the same utility level both times but I got two different price vectors. Okay. And of course, at this utility, at this price vector, let's assume I choose x1 naught up to xn naught. Those are my optimal choices that I choose at those prices. And this one is x11 up to xn1 are the quantities I choose at those prices. So this is the cost minimizing bundle at those prices. This is the cost minimizing bundle at those prices. Everybody understand the idea? So these are, this is the low cost bundle when these are the prices. This is the low cost bundle when those are the prices. All right. Now the fact that these bundles are cost minimizing is going to tell me that the sum of the x i1 pi0 bigger than or equal to the sum of the xi0 pi0. Everybody agrees with that? That is, this is the cost minimizing bundle at these prices. So at these prices, this bundle has to cost at least as much. Otherwise, this one couldn't be cost minimizing. Right? If this one costs less, then that would contradict this being the cost minimizing bundle. But do you see that? If you disagree or don't see, please say something. Right? This is the cost minimizing bundle at these prices. So this other bundle, which happens to be the cost minimizing bundle at some other prices, has to cost at least as much. All right? Similarly, the sum of the xi0, pi1, has to be bigger than or equal to the sum of the xi1 pi1 for the same logic. At these prices, this bundle, which is not the cost minimizing bundle, has to cost at least as much as the cost minimizing bundle. All right? All right? Any questions that people have? All right, so now I got those two inequalities. Well, given that this is, this is greater than this and this is greater than this, if I add these two inequalities, it's still going to be true. So now I'm going to get sum of the x i1 p i0 plus the sum of the x i0 p i1 bigger than or equal to the sum of the xi0 pi0 plus the sum of the xi1 pi1, right? That is kind of the mixed up versions have to cost at least as much as the correctly aligned versions, right? That one, I, you know, this is like smart versus stupid, right? You know, this is smart and this is stupid. And stupid's worse than smart, all right? in this example. Sometimes smart's worse than stupid, but we won't, we're not there yet. All right, so anyway, worst of all is when you think you're smart and you're stupid. That's the, that's the, that's the worst case. But anyway, we'll keep going. All right, so where do we go from here? Well, we need to kind of combine this all together into something that means something. So I'm going to bring all the stuff over to this side. I get the sum of the xi1 pi0 plus the sum of the xi0 pi1 minus the sum of the xi0 pi0 minus the sum of the xi1 pi1. <sighs> so I can write this as the sum of xi1 pi0 minus pi. 
I'm doing xi1 minus pi1. Everybody agrees with that? That takes care of that term and that term. And then plus the sum of the x i0 pi1 minus pi0. That all has to be bigger than or equal to 0. And therefore, I can write this as the sum of the x i0 minus, I'm sorry, x i1, x i1, I got a p i1 minus p i0 here, I got a p i0 minus p i1 here, so I got to flip the sign of this one, so I get the sum of x i0 minus x i1, p i1 minus p i0, Oh, did I do that right? X i zero. Yeah, I kept this one. Yep, that's right. Bigger than or equal to zero. And I don't like that way of doing it, so I'm going to do it the other way. I'm going to flip my sign. I'm going to flip this one to be one minus zero. So X i one minus X i zero. P i one minus P i zero less than or equal to zero, right? I just flip the sign here, just to flip it around. What does that say? Now that I wasted your time with all this algebra, what does that say? Think about it. I'm comparing two choices this guy made. This is the changes in prices and these are the changes he made in quantities. What is this telling me? Well, well, what's it telling me in economic terms? It's telling me how he has to respond. Could he respond? In fact, this is going to give us the law of demand. This is the law of demand. Why would I say this is the law of demand? Yeah. Right. Now remember, in this example, the way I wrote it, this is a very general version of law of demand because I, have, I could have all the prices changing at the same time. Right? I, there's nothing here that says there's any just one price changing. I could have a whole vector of prices changing. It says, on average, across goods, the goods for which the prices are going up have to have the quantities going down. Now, you could have some of them go the opposite way, but on average. Now, but think about the case where I only change one of the prices. I keep all prices constant other than one. Then what's going to happen? Well, this sum's going to go away because these terms are going to be zero for all but one of them. And for that one good, whatever way I move the price, the quantity has to go the opposite way. That is the law of demand. But the law of demand is more general than that. It says if I move the whole price vector, I raise this price, lower that price, raise this one, whatever I end up doing, the guy has to adjust in such a way so that at least on average, the quantities are sort of moving the opposite way of the prices. The guy got to buy less of the goods that went up in price and more of the goods that went down in price. You can't go perversely even, on, even when multiple prices are changing, right? So for the Hicksian demand curve, the law of demand just kind of comes right out of cost minimization. And you should think about why. Well, think about the cost minimization problem. How do you minimize cost? You buy a lot of the stuff that's cheap. Right? You can't say, it got cheaper, therefore I should buy less. That's inconsistent with cost minimization. Right? You're minimizing cost. If you wanted to buy it before, you want even to buy it even more when it's cheaper. Right? For cost minimization, it just can't go any other way. If I was lowering my cost by buying 10 units when it was $10 a unit, I can't say I want to buy, I'm going to buy more of it when it's $9 a unit. Even more reason to buy that thing. It's cheaper. Right? So for the cost minimization problem, the law of demand is just 
a direct artifact of cost minimization. Okay? Any questions that people that people have? So we can directly prove the law of demand for the case, for, for the Hicksian demand curve. That is partial XIH, partial PI, less than or equal to zero. That is, more generally, the Hicksian demand system is concave, which is actually just this relationship I put on the board. But the, for certainly good by good, the quantities have to be non-increasing in their prices for the Hicksian demand curve. 